Hey, what's up? I'm Roosevelt. Uh, you can check out my interview with Mr. Indy. I'm here in Mexico City. Uh, I come back next year in March and I can't wait to see you at the shows. Uh, the biggest surprise, I was surprised how big the festival is. Um, I knew that it's big, um, but I've done a lot of festivals and this seems to be one of the biggest in the world, um, just by how many people are going. And yeah, I just, had a, I just had a good time. I feel like the lineup is very well chosen. Um, yeah, especially coming from playing a lot of festivals sometimes, um, I can't really connect to a lot of the bands that are playing otherwise, or the acts. And at Corona, I just felt like I almost wanted to see everything that was going on. Um, yeah, so I saw a lot of other bands, The Cure, I'm a big The Cure fan. Um, yeah, but it was honestly also a bit surprising how many people were at the show. So it was a big, big show for me. Yeah. I love performing Forevermore. We didn't perform it on Friday because we just had one hour um, showtime. But Forevermore is like, I don't know, it's just, a, it, it's so much fun to play it live because it's kind of simple and um, I don't know. It, sometimes it's just, you realize when you play songs live um, that you will play them for a long time live. So Forevermore is like a, like a live favorite of mine, yeah. I guess, so I was in a, in a time where I was um, kind of taking a step back from the music just because Polydance, that last album, we were touring for almost two years because it started in the pandemic and then some of the tours had to be postponed and um, that's just why it, yeah, it took two years for that whole album cycle to finish um, and it was a lot of fun, like it was, you know, took me to so many places and um, it just... I was just so exhausted from it that I wanted to take a step back. Um, and while I was like having some off time, all these ideas of music came into my head just randomly. Like I didn't even try it, try to write, it just happened. Um, and so the working title Embrace was kind of like a note to myself to, I don't know, not to run away from my music and my career because it's, I had this realization that it's such a part of my character and of myself um, that I didn't want to stop doing it at all. And it, I, it's not it's not some work that I can push away. And it's just, yeah, it's just myself and part of me. And so Embrace was like a, um, a working title. And then when I did the lyrics for some of the songs, it all happened like very naturally that this whole theme of embracing a certain emotion, whatever it can be, and not pushing it back, um, dealing with anxiety. Um, it's all themes that are in on the album. So Embrace just was like more and more fitting to the whole record. And that's why I like kept the title, the working title as the final title there. Uh, I mean, it was just a fun process getting it together. Um, I wanted to do like a classic 70s LP cover um, and on Polydance it was just a graphic design without me on it. So it was just like an idea that I can be on the cover with a microphone and then be surrounded by almost like a fantasy studio kind of setting. Um, and then we had this idea of the mirror cubes, which are now also part of the stage design. So the risers have those mirror cubes now. Um, yeah, and I was working with a couple of people on like creating it and it was just a fun process to get it all together. And I wanted to, I just had this idea of like white and silver and this as a, as a main color concept. And from when we had that like basic idea, we just tried to have fun with it and, you know, put something together. I think so. I mean, Kind of like subconsciously because I uh, I don't go on the search for new inspiration. It's just something that happens. Like friends are sending music to me or I, I'm at a festival and I see other bands. Um, 
yeah, so it's something that happens naturally rather than me trying to find new inspiration or something. But as a music listener, I, I do like to go into record shops and like um, find stuff, especially for DJing. I'm, I'm looking for stuff all the time um, that I can DJ. Um, yeah, but with the inspiration for my own music, it's just from everywhere. It's, it's, it's not just about, yeah, finding other, other people's music. It's more about, I don't know, um, surprises and like happy accidents and yeah, more stuff like that. Uh, Yaka Mesa, it, it started as a intro for Paralyzed and I, the plan first was to have it as one big track, but then the intro became so long, like three or four minutes, that it felt right to put it in like two halves, two pieces. Um, and Yaka Mesa is a, a street name where I just produced those songs. It's in Joshua Tree, or I should say in Yaka Valley, it's close to Joshua Tree and in California. Um, and I rented a house there to work on the music. So some of the some of the names on the album, because I was traveling so much, I just named them after where I did them, almost like a diary. Where, yeah, I just felt it was cool to to give the songs the name of where I actually produced them. So Yaka Mesa was on the street called Yaka Mesa. I think it's Yaka Mesa Road, and um, track called Lake Shore. That was also on Lake Shore Avenue or Lake Shore Road. Like the street name was Lake Shore. Um, yeah, it was first. It was working titles. Do you, do you know when you put in voice notes on your phone and it says the location on the voice note? So it just started from that. So my voice note said Lake Shore, and then like because sometimes I'm singing on my phone as a voice note. Um, so it started from that, and then I just kept the title. Yeah, life was really hard to finish just in terms of the mix because I mixed uh, this record as well. Um, and I think because the concept of this record was that I recorded it in a lot of different places. And sometimes it's just hard if if the tracks um, or the recordings of a track don't come from the same place. But like there was a synthesized recording in Berlin and then from LA and then from New York. And then to compile all these into one track, it was a really big challenge. And um, some of the tracks on the album, like Realize, for example, they just happened in a couple of days and they were kind of finished. Um, and Alive, I, I remember I really had to fight with the track. It felt like a wrestling match. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of proud that I managed to finish it. And it felt like a good album closer, just in terms of how, how how huge these sounds are layered and like big wall of sound and I don't know, it's a good album closer, I think. Well, I guess the whole message of this album for me, that's also why it's called Embrace, is that I had this realization that I can do this for as long as I want to because I think coming from like a smaller village in in Germany, maybe you subconsciously always think, okay, at some point in my life, because I also turned 30 in the pandemic, at some point in my life, I'm going to do something different. Like the music is just a fun thing and then I'm going to have a proper job, uh, which is, you know, which is uh, crazy to, to think when you have a career. Um, but this album showed me that I can do this for however long I want to do because this is like my part of me and part of my character. So advice for me in 10 years is um, I hope you're still doing this and I hope you're still enjoying it um, and keep on doing it, you know, as long as it's fun to you. And advice to me 10 years ago would be, you know, just keep on doing the thing also. So it's kind of the similar message. Um, no, but I was asked the other day about if I have any regrets about my career or something, but I think everything had its its meaning, you know, everything had its place. So, yeah, I don't have really advice to me 10 years ago. I would just say, keep on keep on doing what you do. Yeah. And don't forget to enjoy the, the moments. 
Yeah, so we're going to tour this album a lot with my band. Uh, we are doing Europe now in December this year. Um, and next year we just play a lot of festivals. We actually come back to Mexico in like March. Um, we are going to announce it next week, the, the details. Um, yeah, we do three headline shows in Mexico, which I can't wait for. Um, yeah, just more touring. In January, I'm probably starting to work on new music in my studio. Um, yeah, just continue playing and continue writing new music.